you know, growth hormone to me is after testosterone or on par with testosterone, probably the best thing out there. Yeah, I agree. So let's just get right into it. Uh, started with growth hormone. On a scale from S tier to F tier, how anabolic is growth hormone? And we have to differentiate a little bit between growth hormone by itself mm -hmm. and growth hormone in combination with other performance enhancing mm -hmm. drugs because there's a bit of a difference there. Yep. Kurt, take it away. You're, you're a high dose serosim guy, give it, so. Uh, I'll give it an S for, an both, S. for both solo, yeah, super. For both oh, yeah. solo use and combined with steroids, I think the biggest difference that we're aware of is when it's used on its own, it looks like six milligrams is required mm -hmm. for any sort of permanent tissue growth. When it was used in smaller amounts, the growth wasn't permanent, right? But in combination mm -hmm. with steroids, we don't really know what the actual dose is to cause hyperplasia. I mm -hmm. will be looking into that. So I started a medical journal with another doctor that okay. we're going to start publishing steroid studies that would not be normally funded by pharmaceutical companies because they don't care. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll start looking into some of these things to see what, what amounts and what drugs interact appropriately with growth hormone and would cause okay. some level of hyperplasia. I would guess based on my own experiences, again, N equals one, it seems like, you know, nine units or three milligrams seems to be about appropriate when combined with an adequate amount of steroids. Right. You know, um, but I give, you know, growth hormone to me is after testosterone or on par with testosterone, probably the best thing out there. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. So we're starting off right with S tier growth hormone way overpowered. Dean, what do you think? Yeah, like Kurt said, we have that study, obviously, already done. I think it was 250 milligrams of test, and then they added three IUs of growth hormone with the 250 test, and then obviously there was a control with nothing. And like Kurt said, when the growth hormone was added alongside the testosterone, there was a massive increase in terms of like recovery, which then played into lean, lean mass gain. So yeah, I'd be in agreement with S tier, I guess one of the caveats is in recent years, we have these influencers advocating, you know, one unit of growth hormone or two units of growth hormone as being solo, which yeah might have a benefit for some level of lipolysis, but as a, a PED for muscle enhancement solo, I don't think you're going to get anything out of two units of growth hormone for no. muscle building. No. I think I think it's good as a sleep aid and maybe mm -hmm. as a cosmetic appearance aid. If you're a woman and you run two, I use growth hormone, maybe three. I mean, the, something that my wife would run, right? Before yeah. bed. My wife um, runs three before bed. Yeah, exactly. So you sleep better, look better, look younger, fill in those wrinkles, grow the nails a little bit faster, more excuses to go for pedicures and manicures. Mm -hmm. It's all good with me. Um, so I would say that like it's cosmetic anti-aging not true anti-aging for that you need rapamycin and you know dipycloflozin and empycloflozin and that kind of stuff um but i think for bodybuilding if you have to go through all the compounds that we have and we have 500 to choose from growth hormone will be second yep. after testosterone it's that simple and i always tell people growth hormone is part of the triforce of anabolism testosterone growth hormone insulin which we'll get to kurt don't worry mm -hmm. <laughs> then we'll revisit the insulin again but i think uh, testosterone growth hormone and insulin is kind of the triforce of anabolism and uh, i would put it in s tier also uh, what i would recommend people now that i have experience with higher dosages is to slowly ramp up your dosages over time make sure that you manage your electrolyte intake the magnesium potassium to prevent carpal tunnel syndrome Right, um, the pressure on the nerves in the arms, that's not resolved for me. Mm -hmm. And um, make sure that you're on top of your taurine because it seems to, like with two or three IU jumps, you seem to be able to kind of tolerate that, right? But if you go straight from two IUs to 18 IUs, yep. um, besides the financial drain, your body might not be able to handle it. Um, so yeah, if, if you want to go, if you're financially capable to ramp it up that high, and again, in the off season, you can safely run generics, even though the efficacy might not be on par, which, yeah, well, we should get into also, um, because I don't think that, e that generics are S tier. No, I say generics. No. <laughs> no, well, it's so, it's yeah. all over the place. Could be F. Depends on what. Yeah, it could be F, right? Yeah. So let's let's say good generics. Where would we rank that? Is that B tier then or C tier? No, just put them at the average amount in the middle somewhere. C. C. Right. So they're yeah. about fifty because of the binders and fillers. About fifty percent absorbed compared yeah. to a pharmaceutical. So, you know, yeah. you could, you could double the dose and in theory, but again, 
that's not been studied, so it's hard to say. I've not personally gotten a whole ton out of generics. Mm -hmm. And um, it's weird because, like, we discussed this off air with generics. Like, I've, I've ran two decently dosed generics up until now, right? Mm -hmm. Testing about 32 to 36 nanograms per milliliter on the serum test. Both give me good results. It's not quite the same as a pharmaceutical, like a nortitropin or a genotropin. And every time I use a high dose generic, I get some irritation at the injection sites. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that is. Baloxone 188. So it's a polymer okay. that's used as a stabilizer. And that generally causes that lumping that stays there for a while. Uh, ah, the other thing that's interesting that too is it. the mannitol yeah. that's used as well. So I think that was misunderstood for a while. The mannitol mm -hmm. that's placed in the generics and not used in the pharmaceutical is not to control water. It is to speed up the freeze drying process. So when growth hormone, right. after growth hormone is produced, it needs to be freeze dried and then packaged and shipped. The underground labs, I like to use the term underground lab, but not generic because the, the, the medical term for generic means it's made to the same standard as a pharmaceutical, just off label, mm -hmm. which as we know, the, gener the underground lab GH is not made to the same standard. So they add mannitol to it to speed up the drying process so they can they can uh. make large batches of it and get it out really fast. And then I a lot of guys will get, you know, they'll almost get some muscle pain from it. Like it's almost too drying versus the pharmaceutical stuff you look much fuller, bigger. Right. On. Yeah. Yeah. Because the mannitol, totally of course, acts, yeah, acts as a diuretic. Yeah. To a so, but it's not extent, in yeah. there on purpose as a diuretic for you and I. It's in there as a diuretic to speed up the process of manufacturing. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, the other, I was just going to give some general tips because I get hundreds of DMs about usage of growth hormone. <laughs> and, and again, people can do whatever they want. It's their body, their drugs, their wallet. Yeah. Really, the proper way to use this stuff and no bro in Gold's Gym is going to outsmart Pfizer or, you know, Merck AG. It really, the dose should be taken at night in one bolus, regardless of dose. Mm -hmm. It does not need to be split up because you're not really timing it for anything. It takes four hours to absorb. So you take it in the morning, mm -hmm. you're not even seeing it for four hours. You're going to mess up your glucose metabolism by doing that, right? You yep. run the risk mm -hmm. of becoming diabetic. Um, it and and you really most of the effects are through IGF. You're looking for that gigantic bolus response. The IGF has fat loss effects as well, so it's not yep. like mm -hmm. you know. I know years ago Derek made that video about you know the, the 1.7 cutoff for fat burning, but e as you ramp the doses up, you still see increased fat loss. So it's not just through GH. The IGF True, is and then, then based on nutrient timing and what kind of other metabolic. Yeah. Well, that's the you have in place, you know, it's the food also doesn't really matter. So if you take it at night, it doesn't matter if you've eaten or not, because one, it doesn't matter because IGF is going to modulate most of the response anyway. And with the mm -hmm. four hour window, even if you've eaten human transient time in the gut, it's like three hours. So the food is not really even there anymore. So it's not like, it's not like you need to fast to this. When we get into the secretagogues, that's some of the, the problems with those is you have to time the food around them. Right. right, because if you have insulin present, because you're you're trying to just make your pituitary work better, right? With growth hormone, you're forcing a situation. It doesn't matter if there's food or not. So the guys who are obsessing about fasting before the growth, that stuff doesn't matter. If you get a box of pharmaceutical growth hormone, you read the instructions. It literally says sub Q, app ed, whole dose. You know what I mean? And the only other way to bypass the side effects is every other day. It doesn't have you reduce things. Mm -hmm. you know? And the other one that you know, controversial again, but from a medical point of view, you want to inject it subcutaneously. IM is not causing any sort of localized growth. It still no. has to enter circulation and you mm -hmm. lose almost 20% of the growth hormone by injecting IM. So it's- Oh, this, because it metabolizes faster and yeah, it doesn't yeah. bind to the truncated uh, growth hormone receptor. Yeah. Okay. So it's, and this has been studied because again, when they designed, like when Seristim was designed, they spent billions of dollars looking into how to make this the most efficient way. It wasn't like, if there was a better way to take it, like the way bodybuilders tend to use it, that's how they would administer it. It's not like they're doing it for convenience, right? If someone's diabetic, they're using insulin all the time. So it's not like the pharmaceutical companies are concerned with putting you in an inconvenient place with dosing. They don't really give a shit. It's maybe, more maybe maybe the case for Nabito. I one shot every twelve weeks, but yeah, like most that, of the, most but of the, again, yeah, that's, that's a different. We, when different we get drug. into that, that's a whole different drug. That's another, yeah. you know, a whole different um, delivery mechanism. Yeah, so I mean, I would use it sub Q. I'd use it at bed, regardless of the dose. You know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be concerned with food right before it. And I would just move on with that. That way, if you're doing fast cardio in the morning, it's still in your system, right? And the pituitary doesn't experience any sort of long-term shutdown. So if you inject it at night, by the next afternoon, your pituitary is back online producing GH again. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, the androgen receptor that's going to cause HPTA shutdown for months, years. Yeah, I think some of the statin levels were increased for about 24 to 36 hours. And, and IGF-1 levels are elevated for about 36 hours. So within one and a half days, there's zero negative feedback. Yep. 
And that's why maybe sometimes it's good to, like during the off season when you're running higher dosages of 12, 18 IUs, to only use it on workout days, like what Dean was doing during his last cutting cycle. Um, because that's what I started doing myself. And now most of my carpal tunnel syndrome and water retention is actually significantly less, yep. um, even though the weekly intake is still pretty much the same. Yep. Um, so, so you know, I, I would still not recommend growth hormone on the night you had a cheat meal. Uh, but during no. the week when you're eating healthily, you know, um, then I'm okay. So if you're eating a pizza, which has been shown to increase your insulin secretion for like 12 hours yep. after, then I would probably skip the growth hormone. Um but if you want to take some Incrolex after your pizza, that might be a better option because that actually helps with nutrient partitioning. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree that pharmaceutical growth hormone is certified S tier. Generics, I'm willing to place into C tier, and that's good generics. Um, I will say that, that the quality of generics have increased tremendously, and the price has come down tremendously over the last couple of years. And I would only consider now, even with you know one of the better hookups for generics, that I would only consider them during the off-season. Um, because the water retention is a little bit more severe, the fullness is a little bit less comparatively dose-wise, but you can compensate for that with a little bit more food, a little bit more electrolytes, and since you're going to be a little bit fluffy anyway, um, that would be the perfect time to kind of run it, because right now I don't care about my cosmetic appearance that much. I'm stocking up my pharmaceuticals for pharmaceutical GH for the next time I do a cutting cycle um, and to save a little bit of money, because the price is so good on these generics. I'd rather run them. But then we're, we're talking not in IUs, we're talking in vials. Yep. And the, so only doing, other, the only other thing I was going to address, because I get DMs about this too, is how to dilute it properly with yeah. what solution. So if you're not using a whole bottle, you want to use bacteria static water. You do not want to use saline and you do not want to use sterile water. Sterile water is like what comes in Seristim or when you buy in a bottle is only if you're using it at one dose, the whole bottle, because bacteria yeah. will grow and you'll get sick. Um, Bacteria, saline will screw up the absorption of it as well. So you don't want to mix growth hormone and saline per se. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So just to, you know, so I don't unfortunately have the time to answer all this DM. So hopefully that solves some confusion. Don't worry. Those questions will still come. They'll come. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's, uh, let's move over from growth hormone being A tier and generics and C tier. 